Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is For the People and By the People with your host, Laura Pugh. Before I go into my segments tonight, I want to talk about the possibility of a name change for or from For the People and By the People. The reason why I did For the People and By the People was because I was hoping for a little bit more communication between the viewers and, uh, viewers and myself. I haven't got that. And so it's been things that I want to talk about, but not really much from what you want to talk about. So I need to change it because I'm not a liar. (laughs) I'm not going to, you know, pretend that I'm something that I'm not. And I don't want my title to portray me as such, as, as, as something that, like, again, the attention or the, the, the reason why I even started this is not actually holding value to, I don't know, the people who wanted topics discussed, but apparently aren't discussing it. Anywho, give me a new idea. Comment below. I'm actually going to go through your comments and research. Or not research, but like I, I, I really want to look into what you're thinking as far as a new title. Uh, despite for the people and by the people. Let's get a new one. Anywho. So, in the past 14 days, 10 days, um, the Trump got back from his uh, extraordinary trip from the UK, from Poland, from France. And uh, it was during January 6th, January, June 6th, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the 75th anniversary of the D-Day landing. That, if you haven't heard Trump's speech that day, you need to go back and listen to it. In fact, uh, after this, what I'll, what I'll do is uh, I'll add it to it. Among a couple other things that I want to add, it just it depends on if you want to sit and listen to it afterwards. But it even the Washington Post stated... Trump stuck, uh, stuck to the, uh, excuse me, Trump stuck to the script in Normandy. That's exactly what we need. The Washington Post stated this, the Post, not a fan of Trump whatsoever. So, you know, if Washington Post is stating this, it's probably a good speech. In fact, I think it was one of the best speech, uh, speeches, the best speeches he's ever given because of how the magnitude of that day and the anniversary and how it saved a free world. In fact, and I don't have it written down, so I'm going to kind of go off by memory right now. Um, he stated it was, uh, it wasn't just the army packs on their backs. It was the weight of the entire free world that those men carried. I mean, it just, it, World War II, I, oh, my friends always ask, like, man, you're obsessed with World War II. Like, why? It really is the world, like, World War that uh, saved the entire world. And it was among, I mean, it wasn't just in America. It was a bunch of other countries involved as well, but um, we're not going to get into that right now. Um America was definitely uh, right at the front line, though, and I think sacrificed probably more so than uh, any, I don't even want to say that. It's difficult to say, but uh, that day was, uh, it was incredible, and I'm thankful for it, and I'm thankful for those men that went on the shores of, like, was it Omaha, uh, the whole, I can't, I, my memory is phasing me right now. So, I mean, I know there's a lot of states in there like that we named the different shores from. Not, I'm not doing this in a joking matter. It's all very serious. But yeah, Normandy itself, Normandy, um, with the different battles along the ridge, uh, all of them, we cannot pay our debt. Like, we cannot pay their debt whatsoever. There's no way. In fact, uh, we just, we continue to celebrate their sacrifice, 
Um, and their, uh, look at their courage to go out there. I mean, they were young as 18 years old. So I thank the families of the, um, those that passed. And of course those, uh, the family members that exceeded after them and created new babies and new lives. I thank you to have such a grandfather, great grandfather. I'm pretty sure it'd be great grandfather. No, great, great grandfather. Either way, I thank you for their lives. And, uh, I don't know what else more I can say. The next thing that I want to go into is um, Nancy Pelosi during that time. So Trump is over there. He's he's gaining respect. I mean, you cannot have a more beautiful ceremony or the most like, I mean, everyone wants to talk about Trump's presidential ways or he's not acting presidential over there. In the UK during his Europe visit, could you name one thing that wasn't presidential about him? You couldn't. There was none. Because he knew of what a great ceremony and what this, like the memorialization of D-Day on the 75th anniversary. You know, when he, when he's in, uh, you know, China or Japan or wherever, and he tweets out, and I think this is one of the things he tweets out, oh my gosh, Joe Biden, uh, Kim Jong-un labeled him as low IQ. I agree with him. Okay, well, let's calm down there for all you crazies that, oh my gosh, he's agreeing with a dictator. No, he's not, you dummies. He's been saying this the whole time. He's just laughing at the fact that somebody else called him that. And you know Trump. If somebody else agrees with them, he's going to laugh at it and, like, tweet about it, probably. That's just who he is. It, I mean, call him, like, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. So, anywho, everyone complains about that of Trump. Oh, you're overseas, and you're talking about this, and you're bashing Joe Biden at the same time. He was an ex-vice president. An ex-vice president was what they used. Uh, so you're bashing, uh, you're you're agreeing to a dictator that you're not really agreeing to. You're just stating something that you've already said that he happened to say as well. Then the media, then he goes off and attacks Joe Biden saying he's low IQ because he's always said low IQ Joe. I mean, he's given nicknames to I don't know how many people. Can you keep up? Probably not. I don't care. I think it's funny. I think it's new. Uh, it's a, definitely a great way to kind of label people in a presidential race. But he's always, <clears throat> excuse me, he's always called Joe Biden low IQ. But now he's overseas laughing about the fact that, you know, Kim Jong-un, yeah, I get it. He's a, vic a vicious dictator, but so is uh, President Xi. And uh, Obama had no problem letting him get away with uh, a bunch of, like, horrible trade deals. He's a communist dictator, by the way, uh, President Xi, even though you call him president, but whatever. So he gets blasted by the media for doing this. Well, then during, <clears throat> excuse me, during the Normandy visit, who goes and blasts him? And calls for his imprisonment. Not impeachment, imprisonment. That's right, it's the Speaker of the House. The third in line to the presidency, Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi. No one says a fucking word, excuse me. No one says a damn word about that. Nancy Pelosi, like Pelosi, on American soil at the time, is stating while Trump is in the UK uh, commemorating and having these amazing, uh, amazing ceremonies with other countries and world leaders, while he's doing that on the 75th anniversary of D-Day, she comes out and states in a closed door meeting, and this got leaked out, Stating that I don't want to see him impeached. I want to see him imprisoned. She's talking about the President of the United States of America. 
The president of the United States of America. The president of the United States of America, who's over in Europe, representing our country, regardless if you like the guy or not. He's representing our country in a very respectful way on the 75th anniversary of D-Day, in which a lot of countries, European countries, all of them, got liberated from a fascist dictator, Hitler. Adolf Hitler. But you won't complain about that, will you? No, you complain about a stupid tweet of Kim Jong-un, again, a dictator, but he wasn't the one who was incarcerated. Or like, I, I don't even want to go into that part. That's another segment. But he's, he's a guy that basically said the same thing that Trump has always been saying about Joe Biden being low IQ, dumb. Dumb. And you you ridicule, you ridicule Trump about that when he's overseas uh, in Japan. But then when he goes to the UK, when he goes to Europe, you're actually talking about imprisoning, uh, imprisoning the United States of America. Excuse my kind of stuttering right now, but I'm very upset. Talk about a double standard. You are the worst. Nancy Pelosi, you should be expelled from Congress. And if anyone had some balls, they would do that to you. But it, with the rules and regulations, you can't do that because you need, like, I, I'm not even going to that. It's not going to happen. She knows it's not going to happen. And that's why she's saying that. But what I want to know is why the media won't say or touch on the fact that she stated I do not want to see him imprisoned, or I'm sorry, I don't want to see him impeached. I want to see him imprisoned while he's over in Europe commemorating the 75th anniversary of D-Day. You've lost your mind, Nancy Pelosi. You're a drunk and you should be expelled. But no one cares. No one cares. Can you imagine if, uh, you know, during the Obama administration... The re a Republican came out saying that, they'd be gone. They'd be completely gone. All right, last thing that I want to talk about is um, <laughs> the hearing on Monday, which actually it's been continuing throughout the week, these different hearings, uh, chaired by um, Jerry Nadler. He first brings out in the 116th Congress, the House of Representatives, his first key witness into the Mueller probe or the Russian collusion. Yeah, they're not talking about that anymore. Wonder why. Uh, the first witness was uh, um, Cohen, Michael Cohen, a person who had lied and was charged and convicted of lying before Congress. He was actually going to jail not too long afterwards. I think what Cohen did was try and buy himself some time before he had to go or whatever. I don't know his reasoning. I really don't give a crap. The second person that they uh, come up to testify, John Dean. Now, if anyone has been living in the dark, John Dean was convicted and imprisoned for four months for obstruction of justice during the Watergate scandal. He was actually obstructing, like he knew what was going on during Watergate. He worked for Nixon's uh, counsel and uh, didn't say anything until he was a bit squeezed to death to the point where he had to say something. And he was in prison or got convicted and imprisoned for four months. Now, during the Monday's hearing, he stated, I wasn't in prison. No, you actually were. You were. You did a, a four-month prison stint. So I think you're uh, now convicted of lying to Congress. Can somebody look that up? That's another lie. I mean, these are the guys that the Democrats are bringing up. These, <laughs> these freaking liars. These convicted felons. And we're supposed to take them seriously. So, yeah. So, Nadler brings up J uh, John Dean, again, convicted for obstructing justice and served jail time. 
despite what he said in the hearing. Lying under oath, are you, buddy? Johnny. The key, like, he even came out and stated that he was a non-fact witness. Why the hell is he even there? You have Nadler, who apparently is obsessed with the fact that, uh, obsessed with the Mueller report, specifically volume two. He doesn't want to talk about Russia anymore. He wants to talk about obstruction of justice. So he focuses on volume two. He then uh, gets into his crosshairs. John Dean brings him in to testify. I don't know against what, because he wasn't even a part of it. Like, what the hell are you, like, did, were you a part of the Mueller investigation? No. Were you ever interviewed in the Mueller investigation? No. Were you even brought up in the Mueller investigation? No. None of that. Yet here, this 40-year-old, or not, I'm sorry, 40 years later from the Watergate scandal, and I could be getting my math wrong on that, is now this dude, this convicted felon, Jerry Nadler decides to bring him for opinions, along with a couple other liberal attorneys to give their advice on something they were never a part of. I mean, the, the left has seriously lost their minds. This is now going into, if they actually get their way, and I don't think they will, because thank God our Constitution and basically the rule of law is a pretty pretty heaven, uh, I'm sorry, heavy and deep, uh, deeply rooted. Yeah. <laughs> it's not going to happen. I hope the left knows it's not going to happen. They're uh, uh, in a rude awakening for truth. I think that one of the greatest things, uh, it was Representative Doug Collins stated, I mean, he, I'll, I'll post what he stated on this video, I'm not going to go through the whole speech, but I mean, he went to struck McCabe, Comey, Page, Lynch, all these people, the cabal that went against Trump, the cabal that went against the election, the cabal that was upset the fact that Hillary Clinton didn't win and they were going to do everything they could to get Trump out of office. Who does this sound like to you? Prosecuting midnight or morning raids. Early dawn raids, pre-dawn raids, I'm sorry, uh, pre-dawn raids. Manafort, I know he's a douchebag, excuse me, but he is. Uh, the, the tax stuff and everything like that, I think he should be in jail. But you know what? He was in solitary confinement before he was even charged. Why? Because he went against a gag order. This is what they're doing. Anyone they do not follow or anyone politically against them, they're attacking them using the court system, using our intelligence system, using any kind of administrative action they could, including the executive branch, including the president of the United States, i.e. Obama during that time. Whose side are you on? That's the question I want to ask all of you. Whose side are you on? Are you going to be on the left side in which they actually promote this and eventually you're going to be in demise? You're going to be in the demise. You're, you go ahead and support them, whatever you want, but they're going to end up taking control of you too. They're going to end up spying on you too. Or do you want to be on the, um, the right side of things where it's you attack this despite your political side your, you know, whatever agenda. This isn't going to just happen now. And if you allow it and continue, or to, if you allow it to continue like this, it's going to affect you eventually. George Washington stated that with free speech, that was the First Amendment, free speech, that if it's taken away, we will be silenced and dumbed down and then as sheep led to the slaughter. Think about it. Please, again, 
Uh, comment below of what you think the new channel should be changed or the title should be changed to. Hit that subscri uh, bleh, subscribe button, that notification button. Hit the like button and share as many times as you can because I think this is an important time in our generation to do something about it. The least you could do is share. And uh, I appreciate any kind of feedback. God bless you. God bless America.